for me, I just find joy in disturbing the shit. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, honestly, it just. <laughs> and that's how you're going to do well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Authentically disturbing the shit. Yeah. 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 I agree. People, people love it. <laughs> and he, like speaking on that, like one of the things that I had for the podcast that I really wanted to do was we're not going to get into talking about people. We're not going to get talking about like gossip or yeah. celebrities this and the other. Yeah. Whatever impact we make today, it has to be used 50 years from now. So mm. 50 years from now, somebody looks back, opens up our podcast, opens up our videos, and they're like, you know what? This is relevant information even today. Mm. Otherwise, what was it all for? Absolutely. Just momentary, like, lapse of fun. For sure. And then we get a little bit viral, and then it just disappears. Yeah, yeah. We don't want that. Yeah, as a content creator, I'm very similar in that, is that, you know, a lot of people have encouraged me to make super, you know, they're like, oh, you should do, like, you know, very funny, quick, short clip reels that are still kind of getting the message out. But at the same time, it's like, you're a woman, like use like, you know, like girls like to see like you in a dress and be, and I'm just like, you know, that's cool. But like, at the same time, like, how's that going to actually like contribute to my long-term vision of genuinely creating real impact? And I think that that's where I'm at right now is like Mm. finding that messaging, which I was just telling you downstairs is how do I convey a message that's Mm. simple? Simple, effective, yet can catch people's attention. Because I think sometimes I can get a little bit deep. And people are like, what the hell are you saying? (laughs) I don't understand. It's frequency. (laughs) They're not on that frequency. They're just not there. And I think, you know, how do you get to the mass without kind of like self-sacrificing your own values and your own belief systems? So I think that that's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Awesome. So. <laughs> on, that, yeah. on, on that note, yeah. I'm just going to have a quick introduction with you. Okay. So today, Rahul, this is awesome. We're working with uh, Hevi Sardar. Yes. H-E-V-I-S-E-R-D-A-R. D-A-R. Yes. Okay, fantastic. And is that how we, how do we find you if we wanted to go out and try to find a woman's empowerment coach? Um, so you can actually go on right now. I'm very active on Instagram. Um, so that's where I post almost every single day. And as well as uh, I'll be involved in quite a few community events coming up. I'm um, okay. running workshops. So that, again, will all be posted back on my social media. Um, and then in the upcoming months, I'm going to be revamping my YouTube channel. Um, so you can also find me um, at Hebe Sardar Mentor on uh, on YouTube. Yeah. So. This is awesome because you haven't always been this put together as <laughs> as we were talking before, a uh, women's empowerment coach. That's such a big title to hold. And mm-hmm. obviously you have a big following. You've put on so many courses. You've gone from being a trainer for so many years. So you've coached clients. You've got mm-hmm. testimonials, thousands of hours of working with people and training to get yourself to a level of, hey, I'm here mm-hmm. to help women, mm-hmm. right? And I want to know that and then we'll get to how you actually got there. So tell us about your female empowerment, your women's coaching program. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, part of what I do, so I do work specifically with women. And and the reason that I do is because a lot of my own experiences, I feel I'm able to actually resonate with yeah. women um, on the divine feminine energy uh, frequency. So meaning that, you know, any women I find are a lot easier for me to be like, hey, I understand I understand where you're at. I've been at the different energy states that you've been at. Um, and this is how you can actually get out. And and secondly, actually, why I wanted to step into, pers- I'll just I know I'm kind of sidetracking, but it kind of ties in mm-hmm. to what it is. Um, so it is personal empowerment coaching for women. And the second reason why I wanted to do that was um, because I actually had I didn't have a lot of female friends Um, over the last five years coming back to Vancouver after having lived abroad. I had a really hard time connecting women with women. And I realized that there is a gap, especially in Vancouver, where women are having a hard time trusting other women in their space. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, there is this, you know, idea that, you know, women coming into your circle, they're going to create gossip. They're going to create this competitive nature. And uh, I just wanted to put an end to that. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, you know what, like, I'm going to help people individually feel empowered um, in their own lives. And that comes with a whole process of, you know, stepping into uh, understanding yourself on a deeper level, um, understanding what patterns no longer serve you, and then stepping uh, out of those, breaking those patterns and and move, stepping into creation mode. Um, And so uh, that's kind of uh, the gist of what it is, why I got into it. um, 
and uh, yeah, it's kind is, of where it's at. So just based off of that, is there an idea of scarcity that maybe some of these people are uh, missing and then you're trying to create abundance so then they can actually bring other women in? The fear of rejection or societal pressures to be a certain way. Do you mean um, within women's circles? Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. friendships. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know, I've had my own fair share of experiences with other women where I think that the challenge the challenge that came was um, those women, and myself included, not taking that personal accountability and realizing that everything that, like, like, who you surround yourself with is a reflection of who you are and the relationship you have with yourself. Yeah. And so if mm -hmm. your relationship with yourself is living on that, that scarcity frequency, the fear, um, you know, the, the people pleasing, the not feeling good enough, perhaps, right. All of that is going to then uh, is going to then have you create and manifest those types of relationships. And then, uh, and then eventually you'll find yourself in the same cycle of, finding the same people that step into your space because you just haven't actually dived into yourself a lot more first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It starts with you. That's that's what my workshop is. all. Uh, one of my workshops um, that I hosted in July was all about is that it, it, it was called Girl, It Starts With You. Yep. And it does. Everything starts with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because reality is just a perception, your perception. So if you think that, you know, females are going to be competitive, they're yep. going to be a certain way, you're going to continue to attract that. Right. Or you can heal that aspect of yourself that's driving that experience mm -hmm. and then be able to actually attract women that want to see you win, that want to see you thrive, which I've been able to actually find mm -hmm. plenty of. Yeah, 100%. Now. <laughs> right, yeah. So I, have, I have a question. You said you lived abroad for a period of time. I did. And then you moved back here. Did you find it was harder to make friends here than when you were abroad? Yes, okay. I did. Um, I lived in Dubai for okay. seven years. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, when I, I had decided to kind of go out there because I had just always loved the idea of living somewhere abroad. I've always been a traveler. I've been to about 36 countries and 54 cities at this point in my life. Um, and when I came, and, and yes, there's a big, big difference between mm -hmm. Dubai and Vancouver. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With Vancouver, because it's not such a transient city as Dubai is, mm -hmm. you're not meeting as many people that are kind of coming and going. Mm -hmm. And the mentality of people that are coming and going, such as in Dubai, you're going to naturally build bonds, but those bonds might not necessarily last as long, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone's coming and going. Right. Um, in Vancouver, most people have grown up with a certain group of people and mm -hmm. you're probably going to stick to that click for the rest of Long time, time. <laughs> yeah. right? And so I think that that's the challenge is that how do you get people who are coming back into the city or new to the city to mm -hmm. actually build bonds with people that have already created their own circles? Yeah. So yes, I did find it challenging. Yeah, I sure. am so glad that you're doing this. I had this idea that I've been talking to Karn about um, there was this Reddit thread that said Vancouver is a lonely city. Yeah. And people that come to Vancouver find that it's hard to make these deep connections mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. It's very clicky. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so what I love about what you're doing is that you're actually solving this problem. For sure. And I think like I've been now surrounding myself with a bunch of, you know, very inspiring women that are actually on that same mission. You know, there are women right now in our community that are creating massive groups, um, you know, events and things like that, especially for um, the entrepreneurial kind of woman, because I find that that's the challenge, that's even more challenging. So I actually was in my corporate job full time um, up until August, where I was kind of working on both my coaching stuff and my full time job. Mm -hmm. At that time, I, ha I was able to actually create bonds through people that I was working with, colleagues, and that's why you find a lot of people form friendships in the workspace in Vancouver. Yep. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, I am sitting alone most of the time. I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys can resonate, you know, in my little office lounge or whatever. And I don't have as much of that human connection unless I go out and intentionally create it. Mm -hmm. And so having these women, these these entrepreneurial groups um, in Vancouver mm -hmm. that I can that are hosting different events and we're all, you know, doing that, um, it creates this like you know, it's like, hey, you know what? I'm actually going through this journey with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice feeling. I think the second aspect of it, too, is that I've 
intentionally decided that because now I have done a lot of my own healing work internally and, and now can say that I live in a place of abundance, I now no longer feel women as a threat. Mm -hmm. And so part of it comes in what is the work you're doing within to be abundant enough that you can actually step outside of your little office, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and go out there and build bonds with women and actually encourage them and, and celebrate them when they are winning. So that, again, that comes back as a, a reflection of how you feel about mm -hmm. yourself. So, so Hebe, you talked about mm -hmm. uh, the internal work that you did. Yes. What was it that um, happened? Was it something traumatic or something as a child or maybe the moving around? What happened to you that yeah. you wanted to get into this space? Yeah. You must have had a cushy job if you're working corporate. So de definitely. Um, so my journey, I actually just uh, put out my newsletter a few days ago. Um, my journey was definitely not a typical one. Um, I, uh, I had a really, really, really interesting childhood. Uh, I'm from Kurdistan, Iraq, um, so the north of Iraq. And uh, at the time, my parents were political activists. Um, and I'm not going to get into the politics, uh, but essentially, long story short, my dad was um, a very well-known um, uh, leader, uh, community leader uh, in, in Kurdistan, and um, he was wanted, and we were actually, my, the by the regime at the time, I won't be naming anything, um, came to our house and actually arrested my parents. And they arrested me as a two-month-year-old infant. Oh. And so I was actually imprisonated with my mom as a baby for about two months. Um, and, uh, and at the time, rebels had come six months later to, uh, I was able to um, be released after two months and lived with my grandparents. My parents were still imprisoned separately in a men's and women's prison cell. Um, and uh, eventually rebels came and attacked the prison um, that were trying to free these prisoners, um, these activists. And uh, eventually they were able to, my parents were able to escape. From that, um, you know, we were able to move, uh, we had a long journey and long process of getting to Turkey. From Turkey, we were able to apply um, and come to Canada as asylum seekers because we were no longer safe in our country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so after coming from that, um, it created a lot of uh, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. My parents um, obviously carried a lot of this energy, this trauma, and I mean, they don't know at that point how to deal with that. They're just thinking about survival and keeping my children safe yep. um, you know so I can't it's not about pointing fingers at your childhood it's not about it's about understanding the entire you know process the entire journey of what happened that led you to how you are so that whole journey led me to really grow up in a, in, in um, an, an abusive uh, and dysfunctional uh, household mm -hmm. um, I was surrounded by poverty I had I lived in uh, community housing um, you know, and so scarcity, abuse, uh, anxiety, trauma, you can imagine it's, all, it's mm -hmm. all there from that, from the war, from the time of being in that prison cell, um, and, and even more happened beyond that to my parents. So, um, so that kind of led me to, unfortunately, um, you know, absorb a lot of that trauma that I wasn't able to process in my twenties. I looked to constantly escape. That's why I went to Dubai, um, mm -hmm. because I wanted to get away. I wanted to get away from anything in my environment that reminded me of the pain that I was feeling in that moment. Um, and, uh, that unfortunately led me to also feel, um, you know, unwanted, feeling yeah. lo mm -hmm. unloved. And so I would then form um, these, uh, you know, emotionally abusive relationships, uh, these patterns that I fell into in my 20s. I was just looking for someone to validate my worthiness. And so uh, I ended up in a pretty uh, toxic relationship, quite ab abusive, um, moving back to Vancouver in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with this person. And uh, that two years was like the, I would say that was my rock bottom. 2018 mm -hmm. was the, was the, I want to say now today, this version of me was the best year of my life. But yeah. at that time, it was the worst. Um, why it was the best is because it was, it was what I needed to mm -hmm. wake up and realize that I had been trying to run away from everything. Um, and, uh, and that you cannot run away from yourself. 
-hmm. You can't because it's going to catch up to you, whether it's going to catch up to you in the form of bad relationships or creating an unwanted life or, you know, mental health or whatever it is or disease. Yeah. Right. Disease is one big thing that people don't realize that if you don't deal with your traumas, you're going to end up dealing with some very bad physical health issues. Um, and so at that point, I realized I had to make a change. Um, mm -hmm. I walked away from that relationship, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, hit out, um, deleted my social media. I was just gone. Nobody knew where I was. And I did some deep, deep inner work. Um, and once I uh, spent that entire year, you know, doing looking for every possible solution. Um, it took me a couple of years to finally really free myself from mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then I was able to now step into that journey. Now I found um, someone that I genuinely love. We've just celebrated our three year well, anniversary. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> After a, whew, quite a journey, um, you know, someone who's been supporting me uh, in, in my growth now and being able to now reach this authentic space where I genuinely want to help other women free themselves from themselves, feel empowered, feel encouraged to take a step into their healing journey so that they can see that there is something so much more beautiful on the other side. And if I can do it coming from being a child prisoner, dysfunction, abuse, poverty, you know, escaping, you name it. If I can come from that, all of that, and still be able to free myself and go on to the other side, then you can too. So the, the message kind of comes across that it doesn't matter how stuck you feel or how insecure you feel about yourself with the relationship or the work, there's always a way out. And I think the first step that you talked about that from like, from your experiences, mm -hmm. you just had to step out of it. Yeah. What gave you the courage to step out of it? Because not a lot of people have that courage. It doesn't matter surrounding families or friends, mm -hmm. they could tell you otherwise, mm -hmm. but because the blinders are on mm -hmm. and there's insecurities within yourself, mm -hmm. I've been through it, right? For Where sure. I'm just like, I can't get out of this thing and people can tell me otherwise. And I was like, nope, yeah. I'm just gonna dig in this hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was that turning point? Um, this isn't something that I typically like to say, um, but it is okay. the truth. Yeah, if you don't want no, to. No, that, I'm gonna, no, mm -hmm. this is the truth. Sometimes you need to suffer a great deal um, and a pretty, you need to reach a point where you've suffered and you've had enough of suffering. And I think that a lot of the times people will say, well, I want a different life. Well, I would, you know, I don't like my job. I'd rather, you know, work something, but That's so you know, yeah, right? we want to do better. We yeah. want, I want to do better, right? Um, you'll know when you want to take action, the moment that you have, you are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. Yeah. And I reached that point where I was sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And how I knew I reached that point was because I, I began having suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when I started to have those thoughts, I thought to myself, this, this is not, this isn't the, the direction I want to go. This is not who I want to be. I look back at my parents. I look back at my survival. I look back at everything that, how far we had come from that experience, you know, escaping something so massive like yeah. that, which, you know, again, like that, that conditioned somebody. Um, and I look back and I said, there's no way that I am going to deal or I'm going to give permission to these thoughts yeah. because I have come too far to allow these, these thoughts to control my life. And at the time, you know, you, you ask like how, how can you actually create, like decide to make that, take that step? Uh, it starts with intention. That's right. it. You don't have to take action. You just have to have an intention. It's, I want to feel better. I want to no longer feel the pain I'm feeling right now. I no longer want to um, be miserable. I no longer want to be in this relationship. I no longer want this job right now. I no longer want this life. Mm -hmm. I just haven't figured out how yet. And that's okay. Yeah. Right. Write it down. Write it down. That's it. Yeah. That's as much as you can do with the energy state that you're at right there. And, mm -hmm. and mm. the stuff that you're mm -hmm. saying, is this um, applicable in the courses that you're teaching and the uh, workshops that you're putting yes, together? Absolutely. So the new workshop that I actually just launched, uh, actually it's launching tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, but I've done some pre-promote for it already, um, is called uh, uh, Five Days to Awakening Your Inner Goddess. And um, the way that I, I've formed that um, is that I've made it very easy 
short in duration. So it's about 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. This entire workshop is 30 minutes a day for five days. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's super easy to understand, super um, effective as well, because it just helps you get that kick start into your healing journey without feeling like it's this big task that you have to take on. Everyone talks about like, you know, I got to I got to heal. I got to go on my healing journey. And, and most people don't start because they're like, a, where the hell do I start? Like, what do I do? What am I, sp yep. am I supposed to start doing two hours of meditation every single day? Is that what healing is? There's no guidebook. Like there's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's no, there's no like for beginners. That's the thing. There's no guidebook for beginners. And for me, I had to take, it took me two years to not just, I say, you know, reach that point of, of healing or, or climbing my big mountain mm -hmm. over my big mountain, but just to figure out what works. Yeah. just to even figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And I realized that a lot of people that, that don't know how just, and, and the, the answers they're being given are these big, massive ideas or actions that they need to take. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not where you, you need to, st you can just start so small. Like you could literally right now begin your healing journey by asking yourself one or two simple questions. Who am I? What do I not like about my life? Boom. Who am I? That what awareness. I don't like about myself. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What do I not like about my life? Or what what aspect of my life right now is not serving me? That's it. Mm -hmm. There, you've already started your healing journey. But people think again. Oh gosh, like I gotta start doing again. You, have you know, to do stuff. We I have, have to get busy. I have to do have this. To... I have to do that. Yeah, yeah. So um, so part of my intention is to make healing easy for beginners. So they can start. I'm not here to tell you that working uh, through your traumas is going to be a five day thing. I'm not here to tell you that because that's bullshit, right? Yeah. I don't. Can I swear on this? Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay cool. Um, that's bullshit. And anybody yeah. that tells you, oh, you know, in five days you're going to be fully transformed, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. But I can tell you that in five days you can kickstart a journey that's going to create momentum, yep. give you awareness and understanding of how to begin, and you will raise your vibration, you will raise your energy level mm -hmm. to a point where you're not lost, you're not trying to figure out how, now you're just in the, in the momentum of doing. Yeah. And when you start getting into that momentum, one thing leads to another and you begin to look and search for more answers. You know, yeah. Oh, this podcast mm -hmm. is actually aligned with what I, oh, you know what, that meditation actually, I, maybe I should try that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think um, a lot of times also another thing I hear in this this idea of take massive action, right? It's all about action, action, action. The big why, the big purpose. Someone who is depressed or someone who is living in that state of hopelessness mm -hmm is not in the energy state that they're thinking about taking massive action. Mm -hmm. They're just not, you, you're not gonna get them to do it. Mm -hmm. You are, however, capable of getting that person to do just a little bit, mm -hmm. just a little bit. Can you do 20 minutes a day? Yeah, 20 minutes doesn't seem that hard. What about just for a week? Actually. That seems okay. And what you're doing in that process is you're not getting them to heal yeah. and you're just getting them to take the first step. And when they take that first step, all you're doing through that journey is raising their energy state so that now they can actually start to take action. Mm -hmm. So it's really just an, it's a vibrational thing. So we haven't even <laughs> talked, we haven't even done anything action related. It's just getting to that state for the five or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. That's all it is. That's all it is. You might not even listen to what I have to say mm -hmm. in my workshop. And to be honest with you, and I say that I don't even care mm -hmm. if you if you do listen or you're what I care about is that you show up. Mm -hmm. Are you showing up and are you actually pl pressing play or are you coming to my event? Are you showing up? That's all I need you to do. It's just yeah. show up and allow me to guide you through the rest and allow me to share my energy, right? Because energy is the greatest form of language, mm -hmm. right? Don't listen to my words, but listen to how I'm making you feel in that moment. Okay. Am I making mm -hmm. you feel like there is hope? So right? um, there's something called attachment theory where mm -hmm. we're going from, there's people who are anxious, people who are avoidant, and then people get to uh, security. Mm -hmm. How do we work ourselves from these different aspects to get security, mm. right? Because the biggest thing is like, 
I've started studying it and looking into it mm-hmm. just for my own sake. It's more about is it the personality, is it the characteristic type, is it people's behaviors, what is it that's getting people anxious, getting them avoidant, getting them secure. Mm-hmm. And it works in relationships mm-hmm. and it works in work environments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I started catching it and I'm like, I know how to deal with this person. But can you kind of explain a bit of these three and how we get to security? Um, so I'm going to give my own input on this based on my own research and based on my own experiences of how I was able to um, ace get out of that anxious um, survival state which I had conditioned my body to be in my mind Uh, and actually a lot of that a lot of the emotions we feel in our states are actually in our body most people think it's in the mind Um, uh, but most of it is in the body right Um, and so uh, my take on on this is that we become addicted to certain emotions or certain patterns, right? We become addicted because we have over time, based on our experiences, our life experiences, Mm -hmm. created um, these, uh, I wanna say, we've drawn conclusions about, you know, certain things about ourselves and about um, the external world. Um, An example of that could be, you know, uh, based on my experience of my parents telling me that I wasn't good enough because I wasn't going to university. I now feel like I'm not. (laughs) Typical (laughs) Middle Eastern household, right? You're not a doctor, engineer, lawyer? Oh, trust me, that's a whole other story. But that's an example, right? Just that's a very simple example, right? Um, Of, you know, uh, telling me, well, you're not going to be good enough unless you actually go to that, you know, become a lawyer or whatever. And, um, And so what I've done there is at that point in my childhood, I have drawn a conclusion that I am not good enough the, unless I'm actually doing, you know, X, Y, Z. And so I carry this belief into my, um, you know, years growing up and that eventually gets stored into my subconscious. And then what happens with that is that I now feel comfortable being in that state. I am comfortable with feeling not good enough because it's familiar and I have conditioned myself to make it a part of my identity, right? Right. And so so now it's a part of my identity, right? I am Heavy, the not good enough woman. Whether I say this consciously, a lot Mm -hmm. of, it's not about what I say consciously, it's about what's actually stored subconsciously. I am Heavy Sardar, the not good enough girl because I did not go to school, whatever, right? And so what happens is when you become addicted, and this is physiologically, um, chemically addicted in the body to that belief or to that experience, uh, or sorry, to that belief system, then what happens is you will look for experiences in your life to reaffirm Mm -hmm. that belief. Do we know Mm -hmm. that we're doing it? No, sometimes you won't, but part of why we do this work that they start the healing journey is to become aware of those patterns. Mm-hmm. It's to, and, and, and I always say this is self-awareness is 50% of mm-hmm. the transformation the because be, doing, stepping into <laughs> the <laughs> actual, work. breaking yeah. those patterns, stepping yeah. into it and creating new ones. Um, but 50% of it is because most people do not even know, like we live in a society right now where we are so distracted by everything around us by Mm -hmm. consumption tv this that you don't feel good oh well i've got the perfect thing for you get a quick dopamine hit quick dopamine right everything is designed to bring us outside of ourselves is to focus on the external the moment you break you you decide to um detach yourself from the external and and you're like hey wait a minute Maybe it's me <laughs> that's, right. do, yeah. that's attracting all of these relationships. He, yeah. He's not the asshole. Maybe he's kind of an asshole, but maybe it's it's me because yeah. it feels like I keep getting the same relationship coming back to me. Right. It feels like I keep getting the same shitty jobs, you know, back to me. Whatever that experience is, you are bringing it into your life and you're attracting it based on a subconscious belief that you have decided at some point in your life and you have stored into your body and into your mind and decided that this is who I am and your ego and your your your, your um the I am version of you mm-hmm. does not want to lose the identity that you have built because mm-hmm. if you lose identity it believes you're going to die 
Yep. Mm. Right. And so that's why a lot of people like I remember my experiences when I was breaking those patterns, I decided I wanted to reframe, you know, um, my beliefs about, for example, in this case, relationships or mm. about my worthiness. There was a part of me that was actually going through an internal death. Mm. I felt like I was mourning mm -hmm. because there was an aspect of me that was dying so that I could create space and room for a rebirth, a new me. So just kind of bringing all this back to a lot of what you talked about, the attachment styles, um, uh, as much as I haven't specifically dived too much into that, yeah. it's very similar in terms of just how we store um, these patterns in our, in our minds and in our bodies, become addicted to them, identify as them. Um, and then continue to attract the same experiences. You know, mm -hmm. the talk, the the relationship that's going to make me feel anxious, yeah. the relationship mm -hmm. that's going to make me feel unworthy, the relationship that's going to make me feel insecure, whatever. Right? Um, we continue to attract a and lot we keep of those, up. and and they'll keep showing up yeah. until you decide that that's not the version of you that you want to exist any longer. Yeah. So here's a thought process. Um, most people that are actually going through this avoidant or anxious uh, attachment styles, mm. when they actually show up at a higher level of themselves, mm -hmm. it affects the opposing party in such a negative way. Like this person was one way one day and then they showed up completely differently. Mm. How can this be? And now that mm. person becomes egotistical or they're trying to show this wall. Like there's a hardness that all of a sudden, like I felt it for myself. Okay. Yeah. At one point, even with work, yeah. I had to kind of shed the idea that I'm only worth this much money, mm. like income financially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when I showed up with uh, additional, I guess, studying or uh, classes that I took, mm. progress, mm -hmm. business, and I came in differently, there was first a little bit of pushback mm. that no, this is what we know of Karn to be because this is what Karn's yeah. been saying out loud. <laughs> and then when I showed up differently, mm. there was um, a short pushback and then it was acceptance of, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? This is the new version of Karn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're talking about the people around you. Yeah. Um, and how they um, perceive you. As Perception soon as is you huge. For sure. Um, and, and those relationships, right? So. Because then we have to mm -hmm. eventually we're shedding our old selves, but then also the people around us, we have to remove ourselves from that company as well mm. to get into higher kind of groups of people mm -hmm. of whether it's intelligence, mm -hmm. whether it's bonding relationships, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we're just stagnant. Yeah. So I have a couple, uh, theories on this. Okay. Number one, um, I don't believe in jumping to the conclusion that we need to cut people out of our lives mm -hmm. in order to heal. I think that that's a very mainstream idea um, mm -hmm. where it's become super popular because more people would rather put the responsibility of their pain onto other people yes. rather than bring mm -hmm. it back to themselves. Okay. That does not mean, however, that there are certain people that you should not, like there are certain people I believe you should absolutely you know, cut ties with because to some degree they are causing, um, you know, way too much, um, you know, pain or suffering in yep. your life or just not willing to accept you. So A, I don't believe that you should entirely. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I don't is because I really truly believe that every, because we talked about how everybody is a reflection of yourself, mm -hmm. that these people are opportunities for you to identify the aspects of yourself mm -hmm. that need healing. Yep. that need to be um, leveled up, right? Yep. And those people that trigger you, right? And to some degree, for example, for me, in my case, it's my mom. <laughs> my mom triggers me more than anybody triggers me in my life. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and what she does trigger for me is the unworthiness. It's not that she intends to make me feel unworthy. Mm -hmm. It is that there is an aspect of her that reminds me of my childhood or reminds me of, you know, that version of myself. Yeah. But as long as I continue to be triggered by her, then then, then that means I still have some have work to do. To do. Work. Yeah. There's so some work to do. So essentially we're accepting people for who they are yes. without it affecting ourselves. So exactly. so that's where you want so reaching that that state of um, I want to say again, I do not believe healing is a journey, uh, uh, um, a destination. It is a journey. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, reaching that higher level version of yourself requires you to actually um, accept people as they are. Yes, absolutely. Develop enough compassion mm -hmm. to understand that they too 
are also dealing they're with all, their own their internal own things, thing. you know, um, and I think that's a big thing. Now, there's a difference between cutting people out and creating space between people. So as an example, what I've had to recently do as I'm going through my own journey of, um, you know, uh, um, recreating an aspect of myself that uh, the, the unworthiness mm-hmm. aspect of myself from from years and years of believing this is I've had to ask my mother for space. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying I hate you. You suck. You, the way you make me feel is like shit. And I just don't want you in my life anymore. What I'm saying is I love you. And right now the energetic bond that you and I have is not serving either of us because you are showing up to make me, um, Feel the emotions. You nobody can make you feel anything. By the way, no. right? There's no it's such honor. thing as that. You make so it's, it's you yeah. make yourself feel. So it's right now in your presence. I feel triggered. I feel unworthy. I feel this. I feel that. Mm-hmm. And any time, and and then because I feel that way, I'm angry at you. So I'm going to continue to then pour that anger out onto you. And mm-hmm. then you're going to feel like you're constantly doing something wrong. So now we both are losing. Are losing yeah. So I've had to ask her for that space. Now I said I love you. I want to take a step back out of this energy field that we've created, which is shame, anger, unworthiness, you know, resentment, all this stuff, um, mm-hmm. so that I can work on myself internally and really just dive into um, how I can re, um, recreate a version of me that doesn't show up in our in your in our relationship this way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I've had to ask for space. Now, obviously, they're not going to always take it well, right? Especially, you know, they feel rejected. They they feel rejected. Absolutely. But it's interesting because over time, they realize that it was actually for the better good. They might not ever, you know, some people are stubborn. My my mom is definitely stubborn. They might not tell you that directly, but there is a knowing, right? And um, you know, so that that's one aspect of us talking about, you know, love people not recognizing or maybe people not accepting you as you kind of decide to level up or evolve. Of course. The second aspect of this is that um, I find that people are just afraid to lose you. They're afraid. And, and, and when they're afraid to lose you, mm-hmm. that is coming. I, and I, I personally feel this, that humans, you know, we have a big capacity to love. Oh, and the sorry. moment that we build connections, there is, whether it's a toxic connection, there is still some form of love underneath mm-hmm. all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if it's like your parents or if it's like friends that, you know, you've built these great relationships with, but suddenly you're like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I just don't think that your lifestyle serves me anymore. Or like, you know, I don't think we're aligned. We're not thinking the same. Yeah. Um, and those people kind of have a really hard time accepting you. And they'll they'll translate that either in making you feel bad about your decision, yeah. right? Like, what the hell are you doing? What do you mean? Like, come out with us, you yeah, know, yeah, let's yeah. do this, let's do that instead. Or my parents, like, what do you mean? Like, no, absolutely not. Like, you know, you know, this is our culture. You don't cut people out. This is our, you know, stick to your roots. <laughs> tolerate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, tolerate yeah. and I, you I, self-sacrifice, I right? I think, I think a lot of people aren't even aware that, they're they're doing this to you and actually that space will help them realize things that's as well what as it is know, right? so so the cool thing about leveling up and about healing is that it's actually not very selfish because the moment that you decide to to elevate yourself and to elevate your own frequency that is the moment that you actually raise the frequency For of the people else. around yeah. you i i completely agree and this happened mm. like many years ago where I decided to stop focusing on myself and my own needs. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why not just help the people around me? And that actually worked. Mm -hmm. The people that need to kind of just sit back and just watch the show, they're still watching the show, but the rest of them are, they're coming along the journey. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That is big. The other thing too is that if you are actually focusing on yourself, and I say this from a selfless place, because what we also have to understand on an energetic level is that who we are will impact the people around us. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking around angry at my mother, I Mm. promise you anyone that comes into my world is going to feel an aspect of that anger. And I am translating or or I would say transferring that energy to them. If I want to actually show up for the world, then I'm going to make sure that I have 
really dived into myself that I am living in a place of joy. I am living in a place of contentment. Mm -hmm. I am living in a place of peace and purpose. And when I do that, because I've done that at this point, and the amount of people from my childhood that have messaged me, people I went to school with, people that had been, and I, and I was a bad kid <laughs> in high school, mm -hmm. right? Again, I was rebelling out of that anger um, from what was happening at home. A lot of those people that ended up in, in, you know, in drugs and ended up in getting kicked out of school and all these negative experiences have messaged me now saying, wow, thank you mm. for not following this path. Thank you for doing what you're doing in trying to work on yourself and build your own um, dreams and live in your purpose mm -hmm. because it's showing me that it's possible. Right. It's giving me hope. You're like a, an inspiration right? to others as well. For sure. And I think we all can be. This is what I want to kind of send out that message is like, it doesn't matter. I don't care how many. It's not about my followers. I don't even have that many, right? I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's just about like starting with like you, will impact your partner. It'll impact your parents. It'll impact your friends. It'll impact then, you know, um, your community. It'll then, and and eventually it becomes a ripple effect. It snowballs big time. It snowballs big time. So, you know? my, so I actually have a thought. Um, mm. So you're helping a lot of women get into their feminine energy, get into this uh, self-actualization, taking down walls and building themselves up, right? Mm-hmm. How can men help? What can we do to help support women? How do Ooh. we help our mothers, our sisters? <laughs> the question of the year. <laughs> <laughs> like I know, I know I everybody's doing a lot of work, mm -hmm. but then partners have to show up in their relationships accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do I show up? How do I show up? Like yeah. direct it to me, direct yeah. it to Rahul. How do we show up for the <laughs> yeah. women in our life? I, I think at this point, this podcast is going to get you guys a lot of potential candidates for yeah. relationships. Because <laughs> a lot of women want to hear this, believe me. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, and, and I really want to say, like, I want to say I appreciate you for asking that. Because I, I really think that that's needed. And I think it's needed on both sides, too. I think women should also do the same thing. How can I show up for my, for my guy um, or for my father? How can I show up for any male figure in my life um, as they're going through this journey? Yeah. Uh, and the, the thing I would say is two things. Love wins, right? So just yes. show up with love. Simple yeah. as that, right? Yeah. Just a simple, I love you, right? Yeah. I'm here kind of thing. Um, so, you know, as long as you continue to show up with the intention of love, mm -hmm. I think that that's really big for women. Uh, the second thing is to make women feel heard. Because I think yes. that that's, and, and sorry, I'm going to rephrase that. Not just heard, but understood. Because mm -hmm. I think that um, in, in today's world, I think that a lot of women are shouting, right? And I think that's almost kind of what started this feminist movement, um, you know, which I have my own views about. But um, this whole idea of just wanting to be heard and shouting out loud at the top of your lungs, right, mm -hmm. um, is just a need to feel understood mm -hmm. yeah i you know? think there's a there's a thought behind that of what is softness and what is fragility mm -hmm. like you can be soft as a person but still be heard mm -hmm. and this fragility is like how fragile are you is coming from a place of ego for sure and when i think about it, i'm thinking about being soft as a pillow but it can reform back into a pillow mm. however if you take a tv it's quite fragile mm -hmm. it's a harder structure yeah but as soon as it falls and it hits the ground there's just going to be a million pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have a question. I'm going to change the pace a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, we, all this talk about, uh, you know, relationships and finding yourself. There's a lot of people that accomplish phenomenal things mm -hmm. that come from that place of scarcity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how much of what you've experienced is important for you to have gotten to this point to then help others? Mm. Right? Like, uh you know, uh, I don't know what the exact quote is, but a lot of people say like uh, the struggles you go through will define who you become. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. anyone that's done anyone anything great for the most part that I can <laughs> kind of recognize at this time, mm -hmm. they've gone through struggles. Yeah. So how much of this trauma is actually important in, in your journey and in others' journey? It is absolutely necessary. And that's why I said earlier that the current version of me would say that 2018, my rock bottom, was the best year of my life. 
even mm-hmm. though that was the year where I felt the most pain, the most suffering. Um, and, you know, I was at a point where I didn't even have a single ounce of hope left. And I use hope a lot because that's actually what my name means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hope is uh, heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't have any of that. Um, and so I think that um, one of the things that I want to do and part of my mission in taking women through this healing journey is to help them see the light and the beauty in the darkness that they are experiencing or have experienced. Mm -hmm. I think that there is no such thing as good or bad experiences. It is just how we perceive them and how we choose, again, choose, this is where you have the power to decide, right, um, what those experiences meant for you and what they were there to to teach you. Mm -hmm. And I think that if more of us could see the darkness as a means to teach us something, as a Mm -hmm. lesson, rather than being victimized by it, I think that that can change the course of your life. Mm -hmm. Because pain is inevitable. Darkness is inevitable. You will be heartbroken. You will lose somebody in your life. You will experience some form of trauma. It is inevitable. I don't care on what scale it is, whether it's me being in prison as a child or whether it's someone that just felt neglected by a parent growing up or whether it's, you know, you got your heart broken by the love of your life um, that you were dating for six months or right. three months. It doesn't matter, right? right? So it's not, it's, it's your experience and how you choose to perceive it. Mm-hmm. And so see the beauty and see the lesson in all that trauma and all that darkness. And when you do, mm-hmm. that is where you can really create some magic. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Hevi, do you have any kids? No. Okay. So <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> I'm, I'm a mentor to a lot of young people. <laughs> mm. And so sometimes I feel the need to want to guide them the right way, mm-hmm. but a part of me holds back. And okay. the reason I hold back is because I want them to have their own experiences mm. so they can become who they become. And I don't want to be like, you know, kind of like God's hand saying, no, you got to be this way. Mm-hmm. So I, I've actually struggled with that. When mm. I mentor a lot of young people, I'm like, I see things, I see the way they're going. I'm like, maybe I should just let them figure it out. Mm-hmm. So how do you know, how do you navigate that? The pain of being a parent, eh? <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't have kids. Yeah, but I just, just I, mentoring I, I, kids. Yeah, I've okay. kind of felt the pain of having yeah. kids. So I, I think that especially, and I don't have kids, um, but I was a kid and you mm-hmm. were a kid. And we've been all been kids. And um, I think that we know at one point what we've wanted and what we've needed if mm-hmm. we look back today as adults, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that one of the things that I would say is that you can find the, the balance or the perfect dance between mm-hmm. both. And part of how you can do that is making them feel like they are guiding themselves, mm-hmm. making them feel empowered. That's why I do personal empowerment because mm-hmm. I'm not going mm-hmm. to tell you what to do. I'm not here to be like, here's how you're going to change that part of your life. But I am going to give you the tools mm-hmm. to help you identify what needs to be Um, worked on and then for you to take the step Mm -hmm. and so one of the things that you could do and I would encourage and actually I'm not going to tell you what to do but I would encourage you um, to do is to you know guide them in a way um, or give them the necessary tools and maybe the tools could be helping them ask themselves certain questions Mm. you know like hey you know uh Bob or whatever the kid, I don't even I know Bob's like sure. a kid name, yeah, but we'll whatever. Do <laughs> we'll do Bob, right? I don't know. Um, you know, uh, what is what is this doing for you right now? This mm-hmm. experience, for example, maybe those kids are hanging around some, you know, who knows, right? Like in the hoods or something mm-hmm. like that. They're just caught up in in wrong crowds, right? Asking them the questions to help them identify those answers for themselves. And putting them in a state of reflection is the greatest form of both guidance Mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, allowing them to go through the experiences themselves. Mm -hmm. Because now they have, now all you've done is you've planted a seed. Mm -hmm. And then it's the rest of the the, uh, nurturing of that seed is up to them. And that'll actually help them grow up to see, to, to feel in charge and in control of their lives rather than feeling victimized by the experiences. So you can actually do both. 
That's cool. That's <laughs> true, that's true empowerment. Right? That, yeah, that right there is like giving a them huge. The, oh the, yeah, the tools. Oh yeah. Um, I found that people that are on the self discovery journey, there's a level of sincerity that needs to be there. Mm. Um, and I'm sure you've experienced this. Maybe you've had people come to you and say, "I I want change." Mm. But, you know, you work with them for a period of time and you can tell that they don't actually want it mm, and mm. that they might be verbalizing this. Yeah. And I'm using this in your in your profession, mm. but it happens in anything like I want to be the best realtor in Vancouver mm -hmm. and then none of their actions line up. Mm. So what what causes this divergence between what people say they want and what they actually want? Um, I would say that they a lot of that is being dishonest with themselves. Um, it is, it is, there is a gap between the, um, trust they have within themselves, mm -hmm. uh, and the desire. So one of the things that came up a lot for me was I had people say, I hate my job. Mm -hmm. I hate my corporate job. It sucks because I have to wake up and do this thing I don't like every day and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so what do you want to do about it? And they were like, um, well, I want to start become an entrepreneur. And I have actually had one friend that is in this exact um, position from from a place of love, genuinely, um, you know, and I and I tried to navigate this person and saying, OK, well, you don't like your job. It's been a couple of years that you've been telling me the same thing. What do you want to do about it? And, mm -hmm. you know, she would say, well, I want to become an entrepreneur, but I don't really know what I want. Yes. Da, da, and this and this. And I'm like, OK, but. Um, and after a couple of years of that same pattern of saying something, but not necessarily wanting to take that action, mm -hmm. um, I asked her, I said, do you really actually want to become an entrepreneur? Like, because it's really hard. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it sucks a lot of times. It like, does. I am yeah. telling you, like, you know, it, it's, it's obviously fulfilling. Um, but you know that it doesn't have to be for you, right? Like it doesn't right. have to be for everyone. And I get that maybe becoming an entrepreneur is trending right now because of this, you know, social uh, concept of freedom and passive income and, you mm -hmm. know, all that, those beautiful words that are being thrown around right now, which mm -hmm. I think people have no clue what it actually mm -hmm. takes right. um, to obtain those. I'm still figuring it out myself. I know I want it. I know it's my path, but I'm still trying to figure out the formula, right? When it comes to the financial right. side and all that so um you know so i told like do you really actually want it or is it just you think you want it because everybody else is doing it and you think right. that it's going to get you out of your misery mm -hmm. of your job you know and she was like huh you know what <laughs> what you know maybe like maybe i could still work and maybe i could actually start like an online blog with food or something like that you know and i was like that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to dive all the way in. Um, but if you're going to complain about it, right, if you're going to tell yourself that you aren't happy in a certain area of your life, well, there's two things that come out of this. And this is from what I understand is a, that you're either, either not being honest with yourself, that you really do actually want it. And that it's an idea maybe that's been formed out of, um, you know, trying to escape your pain, or uh, or victim be feeling victimized, right? So it's the, the dishonesty or the second aspect of it, yeah, is it's that you would rather sit there and be a victim like, to it mm -hmm. than to actually take action. Mm -hmm. And those are t and and here's the thing, it's like those are valid. Like you're allowed to fine, you're allowed to not like something. Mm -hmm. um, but like if you really do genuinely want to change, do something about it. If you don't be honest with yourself and find another way to actually make yourself feel fulfilled, maybe mm -hmm. you can still stay in that job and do something else. So that's, that, that's the gap, right? So it's interesting. You made it, um, you said it so simply, <laughs> however, the idea behind it is like pretty cool because you made it, uh, like your friend who you're mm -hmm. trying to help out, mm -hmm. you gave her, uh, without an out, to have her own idea behind what she needs to do mm -hmm. without you being in the position of pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. And then you feeling let down. Cause sometimes I do that. Yeah. I see potential in people mm -hmm. and I tend to just push and yeah. drive them into it. And yeah. sometimes that's not the best case. No. Cause everybody's on their own path and journey. Yeah. Like right. I can do it with Rahul. Rahul can do it with me. And it's just like, okay, go, go, go. Yeah. But there's some people I'm just like, Oh, I see so much potential in this kid. And yeah. Why are you just wasting it? Yeah. Do you know the best, um, the best method to that? 
of please. wanting to show up for people and please wanting share. to see them. <laughs> yeah, I should yeah, yeah, would love to the hear best, this. I'd the best it. thing that you can do for anybody, and you're going to hate me because it's so simple and it's not this crazy idea, is to just live the example. Yes. Right. Just live right. it. Right. Detach yourself. I know it sucks, right? Because sometimes you're like, oh my God, I just want to do it. You're like, you have this like potential. Be the example. Show mm -hmm. up every single day. Mm -hmm. Every single day. The more you show up for yourself, the more authority you have in raising the vibration or elevating other people around you. Mm -hmm. You cannot change people. No. You cannot change people unless they decide they want to change themselves. And in order for them to get to the decision that they want to change for themselves, they need to believe, A, that it is possible. Mm -hmm. And for them to feel and to, for them to believe it's possible, they need to see the people closest to them actually doing the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's so true. Yeah, I've experienced that firsthand, actually. Mm. Yeah, anytime I've wanted someone to move in a direction, I was like, why do I want them? I should just do it myself. Do it, and yep. then they see sure. you and they feel inspired and empowered to then, then mm. move along. I'm going to plant another seed with this concept. What if it, the, the, the need on your end to see them change is perhaps um, a reflection of a need to control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to control a situation outside of you. And so if that's the case, ask yourself, why do I feel like I need to control this person's life? Yeah. What is it? What? How does this come back to me? Because mm. you know what it is for myself. If somebody mm. comes to me with a problem, mm. I just want to give them the solution. Because yeah. I've lived experiences. Typical guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you know the fair. answer. We're 100% right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was for like, sure. Oh, this is easy. I live this A, B, C. Because everything's yeah. a math equation to me. It's A plus B equals C. And if we know where yeah. we are, we know where we need to get. I'm like, let's just yeah. fall for B. Whether it's, what, yeah. what are we doing? We're just doing bed mass, right? Yeah. 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 So, the, But that's why, that's why I asked that question earlier about not trying to be God's hand, trying to guide people. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I've had this realization where I'm like, maybe I'm actually hurting them by giving them A, B, C. Mm. Yeah. Like what if I give them ABC and they end up at D, but what if they went A to Z and they got 10 times further, mm -hmm. especially professionally? Mm -hmm. So like how, how much of the time am I like allowing people to like figure it out? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be like trying to save you because now one, you're going to build your own confidence, mm -hmm. you'll make your own mistakes mm -hmm. and maybe you get further along than maybe that I was trying to do. Yeah. So I think that our jobs, um, as you know, when we identify ourselves as leaders in certain people's lives, our jobs is to hold the foundation, not to hold, you know, the, um, I want to say like something that you would lead, whatever you would use the wand, I don't know, um, whatever it is, but it's not our job to um, tell people what to do, but mm -hmm. it is our job to hold the foundation mm -hmm. for them to feel safe enough to have a good enough example, mm -hmm. right, a good energy space for them to make those decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that that is true, true leadership, mm -hmm. right? There's an incredible book that I read too is, um, I forgot who it's by, but it's called The Leader Who Had No Title. Mm -hmm. And it's just talking about, you know, um, leaders that show up in helping people feel empowered without having the title, without mm -hmm. being the CEO, without being any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But they just simply know how to lead by A, being the example, or by B, holding that foundation for people so that they can show up for themselves. That, to sure. me, is ultimately, um, and, and of course, you know, uh, there's aspects of, you know, feeling heard and understood and, you know, acknowledged mm -hmm. and all of that. But, um, but the, the sum of it is that, you know, holding that foundation for those people and mm -hmm. being the example. You will, by the law of physics, you mm -hmm. will raise the vibration of the people around you if you are operating and nurturing your own frequency. That is just plain science. You want the solution? There it is. Yeah. There's a there's yeah. a black and white guy solution. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that book is Robin Sharma. Yes, yes, sure. yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some good work. He's, you know he's amazing. I yeah. came into this podcast thinking I was going to be just like all this thing. And I was like, man, from all the stuff that you talk about females, I was like, this is applicable applicable to 
All of us. Oh, then. for sure. People, people. people oh, in general. Sure. Yeah. Why are yeah. you doing a course for everybody? <laughs> That's next. Why are you giving away her business plan? Yeah. That's... You know, it's funny. I mean, then we need a part two to this. <laughs> I, I would say men probably need it. A you know what? I, guys I, am, need I, it. I am oh, happy. I am happy to. Um, yeah, let's do it for sure. I'm happy to set up a part two and, and specify that for yeah. men. And bring on a couple journey. of cool guys to jump on the stage and. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Talk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys, it's, I'm telling you right now, you guys are setting an example, um, you know, for that healthy masculinity that I think is needed in today's world. And that's, that's such a, whole, a positive thing. That is, yeah, it, I appreciate sure. that. Thank um, you so much. Absolutely. Um, and I, and I want to say from a woman's side that I appreciate that. I really do, and I and I see you, and I acknowledge it, um, and I know that men. Uh, one aspect of uh, a men's intrinsic reward is feeling appreciated, mm -hmm. and I really want to say that I do because, um, yes, this work is absolutely applicable to all human beings. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, part of why I wanted to start with women was a so that I could niche down. Um, I find it's a lot easier for people to resonate and for me to actually build community around um, a smaller niche um, and until I can actually start to really, um, you know, take that on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did start this for women. Um, and then the second aspect was it, obviously I am a woman, right? So it's easier for women to resonate and be able to kind of see, oh, like, cool, like another woman did that. Okay, interesting. Right. Um, and I can uh, navigate them through their own energies and their own uh, operating systems mm -hmm. easier because I have the same operating system. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but, but no, I, I absolutely will be um, at one point uh, considering doing um, something, a workshop for men. It would be probably tailored a little bit differently um, where I would then need to to, um, I think, tap a little bit more into the masculine energy mm -hmm. side of me, which we all have both, um, you know, and, and be able to really uh, direct from that place, um, mm -hmm. which I think will be super impactful. Yeah, awesome. Final thoughts? <laughs> Final thoughts, yeah. I'm just Ooh. wondering, like, what you're working on now and what's next for, for Hebe? Ooh, what is next? What is next? Um, I, I definitely, I think that where I'm at right now, um, I do have some really exciting big things planned out for next year um you know uh, lots of um public speaking podcasts um events more workshops i want to do some live events uh in-person events uh there's just just a lot <laughs> happening um one exciting thing that's to come in the next couple of years i should say um is a book that i'm working on right now oh, uh and um i have put a pause to it at the moment because it is a, it is taking a little bit of a different direction from what i currently do right now now mm -hmm. um but it is it is related to uh, my experience as a child um prisoner so there will be a book uh coming out um about that that's gonna uh, be huge gonna <laughs> <laughs> a child yeah. prisoner yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah there it's actually uh the the prison cell is now a museum uh there is actually a statue of me and my mother and uh, that's placed there in kurdistan and so if uh yeah, I can sh definitely share yeah. some photos and videos of that, but it is super cool. Um, but I wanted to uh, take that not just to, because I am someone, um, I think my essence is that I love teaching people mm -hmm. lessons through experience. I think that that is like my ultimate, like, just joy um, right. and per somewhat of a purpose. Um, and so I don't want to just be writing a, like a biography because I don't mm -hmm. think to me that has as enough uh, purpose, but I wanted to um, format it in a fiction mm -hmm. uh, way where I can actually um, have it be from the perspective of the child. Mm -hmm. So it's going wow. to be from that uh, a really cool place. Um, and uh, I can't wait for that to come out. But that'll that's yeah, there's yeah. there's a few things coming up, um, which I'm excited that's for. That's awesome. Just before that's wrapping exciting. up, yes. there's, yeah. a, there's a quote I want to read. Sure. It's by Tupac. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and this talk. this came to mind when uh, when we were just thinking about doing a podcast with you. Sure. So Tupac writes in one of his songs, since we all came from a woman, a woman uh, got our name from a woman, and our game from a woman, I wonder why we take from our woman. Why we, our women, do we hate our women? I think it's time we kill for our women, be real to our women, try to heal our women, because it's, because if we don't, we'll have a race of babies that will hate the ladies who make the babies. And since man can't make one, he has no right to tell woman when and where to create one. Mm 
by Tupac Shakur. Yes. It's oh my god, that hit my soul right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I didn't know how it would take verse, it in the beginning yeah. because <laughs> I'm getting like yeah. That hit my soul. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. really appreciate I'm feeling that. It, yeah, so. And it's it's very true. Um, thank you for sharing that. And I think that um, that's part of my purpose is to break that generational trauma. Yeah. Break that so that our um, future children, our brothers, our sisters, or I should say our sisters in this case, but really it applies to all human beings, um, that they they see the world a little bit differently. They see it with more light. They see it with more love. Mm -hmm. They see it with more purpose. Um, they see it with expansion, their willingness yeah. to give, their willingness to love. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what we need right now to heal the world. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh, what a phenomenal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for, you. for coming on the show. We appreciate having you on. Um, we're excited to share your story. I'm really feeling jazzed up. I'm pretty yeah. excited. And share those uh, those pictures about the museum yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, it's so great to just reflect on some of us stuff, some of the stuff that we want to leave behind in our past mm -hmm. because it's not. But if you share it, somebody will reconnect and say, I'm in the same spot. Let's move forward with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Happy to share that. Okay. No, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks for letting us be part of uh, <laughs> part of your journey and your story. Ooh, thank you We're guys for about, having me. We're excited me. about the book. We're excited about all the stuff you got coming through the pipeline and the men's uh, empowerment mm. course. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going to be a fun up. one. You guys are coming, coming by the way. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Not to. Not thank to. you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another phenomenal episode for Unconventional with Rahul and Karnveer. So if anybody has any questions, anybody wants to inquire about how to get on the show, you can always like and subscribe, send us an email. We'll link everything in the description below. And we're looking to just serve you guys better for the next one. Thank you. Awesome.